Okay, when working with spot process as PBR, we have to have our artwork on a black and a white background. That's the biggest trick. Uh, if you create your artwork on a transparent layer, you're good. But if a customer gives you something like this, for instance, an illustration flattened on a white background, if you notice our layers here flattened, or they give you a watercolor image or a painting or some kind of something on a white background, a white paper, white canvas, that sort of thing, we have to be able to pull it off of the white background and put it on a transparent layer. And that's not a problem if it's all hard edge, like the top part of this fish would be fairly easy to do. But something like this is very soft transitions, very subtle transitions around the bottom here and all around this side area. So this is the way I handle situations like this. What I'm going to do is go over to my channels. Now remember I always work in RGB, so I'm going to grab the bottom channel, which is blues. I'm going to drag it onto this icon here next to the trash can. That duplicated that channel. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and name this channel mask. This is my alpha mask. And I'm going to go up to image, apply image. And what I want to do is I want to apply the green channel. I want to in uh, what I'm doing is I copy copy the the blue data, the blue channel. I want to load my green ch data into that channel and then I'm going to go back and load my red data into the channel. So I want to have in leave my blending mode at multiply opacity 100%. What I want to do is put all the information that's on that's in this document. I want it on one channel, which is what I have here. I just uh, I copied my blue, and I applied my green and my red. So now at this point, what we need to do is make everything inside of this area solid black. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to focus on the soft transitions first because that's the trickiest part to do. This water over here is nice and hard edge transitions, no big deal aside the back part of this fish, that's easy stuff. But notice we got a soft transition of gray data at the bottom here. We have very soft and subtle transitions along this whole side. So what I'm going to do is I actually do my work with a Wacom tablet, a cordless digitizing tablet. If you don't have one, I highly recommend you to get one, especially for stuff like this. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to hit my brush, my B key that goes to my brushes. I'm going to go ahead and select a nice soft airbrush style brush. I think that would work. Now, um, what we need, like I said, we need to make everything inside of here solid black. So what I'm going to do, I have my black selected in my foreground colors. My mode is normal. My opacity is 100%, but I'm going to lower my flow. I want to reduce the amount that comes out of here so I can, I can control uh, a whole lot more. Now, once again, focusing on the softer transition areas. Now when I paint with my Wacom tablet, my I use my bracket keys. One of my hands hover over my over the bracket keys. So I can if I hit my left bracket it reduces. My right bracket, every time I hit it, my my brush size gets bigger. That's very handy because I can zoom in and zoom out uh, with brush sizes basically and uh, very quickly. So what I want to do now is uh, go in here and start painting into what I know, this, like for instance this, where this little splash is, I know that's going to want to print white. Uh, so what I need to do is make it solid black. I know that sounds very fun, kind of a contradiction or a little strange, but that's the way it does work. So any, w what we want to do, where you see solid white in here, we want that to be the shirt color. That way it looks like this image is just softly coming in out of the shirt, which will be kind of neat. So right here we're going to go 100%. I'm going to reduce the size and this is nice water is um, white and splashy so I know I can do it this way here. Gonna put a little bit, there we go. Alright, so the bottom transition, this soft tricky transition is done. I think that's plenty good enough. Now what I want to do is focus my attention on this side. This is a very soft, subtle edge. So I'm going to hit my right bracket key and increase the size of my brush. So I want to keep all this gray data right here. I'm not actually touching the tablet yet. I want I want this soft, subtle transition. So what I'm going to do is come in quite a bit, and I'm going to just work it over here. And notice that it's starting to fill out, but I still want to keep it a soft, graduated tone. So it is slowly build it. Now that works. It's nice and black here and it softly goes out to white. That's what we want to do. We want to do the same thing for the water area here. I want it to look like it's right here where the glint and the waves are just kind of going in and out. I want to keep that look. Same thing here. I don't want to go too heavy. 
the gray data or the gray information that we keep in here is going to give us that soft transition that we're looking for. Now over here in the water we're going to do the same thing. I want to hit it a little bit. I'm going to take this sky part right here. We're going to keep that. Now as far as this water goes, it's pretty hard edge so uh, we can really focus in on it. So what I'll do is zoom into those areas. I'm going to increase my flow now because it's not quite so critical so I can throw out some more color pretty, fairly quickly. I like to think of the flow as a, um, since I'm an airbrush artist, if I lower my flow, I have less paint flowing literally out of my tip of my brush. If I increase my flow, I'm pulling back on that airbrush trigger and I'm really dumping color. That's one way to think about it when you're working with it. Uh, something that might make a little sense. All right, soft, soft transitions here. We don't want to fool with those. We just want to make the inside of our image solid black. Once again, gray data It's going to give us our soft transition. Everything else we keep fairly tight. This does take a little practice. Um, the trickiest part is, is thinking of how to address the gray areas but what I just did, what I just went through with those gray soft, soft gray transitions is exactly the way I handle all these things. So it's been working for me like this for years and um, with you seeing it, it should definitely help you figure out how to do that. There's other um, masking software on the market. You can go buy that stuff, but uh, I don't notice. I just use nothing but Photoshop's uh, own you know, channel tools and whatnot, and it works great. All right, here's back to the, this is the fish. That's kind of a hard edge. Here's our soft transition, except for this little, this is supposed to be a water droplet. We want that to print white. I'm going to lower my flow just a little bit so I don't mess up this part here. This is a hard edge. You can see it there. There we go. All right. Now that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to hit my L key. That brings up my lasso tool. If I hold my option or the Alt key, it won't close in on it. If I let it go, it automatically closes. So if I just start drawing and I happen accidentally lift my hand up, it'll close that selection. So Control or Command D will get rid of that selection. So I start with the lasso tool. I hold my Option or my Alt key down. And what I want to do is just find a good solid area like I have here and go around this entire image. I want to stay away from the gray shades right here. Come back around on the fin. Go up here. Now I'm going to let it go. So now if I hold my, if I cl hit my option or my alt key and the delete key, as long as my foreground color is black, it'll fill it. Now control or command D to deselect it. Now I don't know if you can see this, but you can see a, a slight transition here from the solid line to the soft transition area. I'm going to hit my B key to get my brush back. I'm going to increase my bracket size, my right bracket to increase the brush size rather. Now I'm going to softly paint over it and that just blended in very nicely. All right, that's looking good. So now we're going to come right back up here. I'm going to zoom in on this guy a little bit more. Oops, too much. Good my lasso tool actually. Hit my L key and dump more color in this thing. Option or Alt Delete, Command or Control D. Now I'm going to hit my B key to get my brush back up. I'm going to zoom back in. Reduce my bracket size. Remember, everything in the middle of this image needs to be solid black. If I hold my space bar, I get the grabber hand. I can actually move around. Space bar does that. You know what? I just overshot that outline. I'm going to Command Z it. I'm going to increase my flow. I want more paint coming out of here. Grab my hand, slide it over, my space bar. A lot of neat little shortcut tips and tricks. I hope I'm not uh, throwing too much at you, but you can always rewind it and hear it again because these are the things that you're definitely going to want to work with.
because you'll speed this whole process up quite a bit. Now you know what? I'm even confused right here looking at it in black and white. Let's take a look and see what that's supposed to be. Aha, uh -huh, this belly. We definitely want to keep that. So now we can turn that part off and make it 100%. So you might have to toggle back and forth just to see because it does get a little tricky looking at nothing but black information. Okay, now our black part of our alpha mask is done. Now what we need to do is apply it to our image and make some changes. And we'll do that in the next movie.